Lecture one, the American dream. Be careful of what you wish for. More is better, right? We have been conditioned since childhood by our parents, teachers, TV, the internet, and especially our peers, that more is better. You must have the latest model cell phone, car, etc. You must study hard and get good grades to land that well-paying job. Why? Well, partly for prestige, but especially to earn a lot of money so we can buy things. Thus, the American dream is that in this land of opportunity, anyone, if she or he works hard and is ambitious, will rise to the top of a company. Well, there is nothing wrong with this. There could be unintended consequences when we land that big, well-paying job. There is a tendency to succumb to social pressure, to prove our self-worth by not only what we buy, but by how much we buy. Again, we have been conditioned since we were toddlers by TV to buy, buy, buy. The entire advertising industry is charged with convincing you, the consumer, that you must buy their product, that it is a need, not a want. You, remember, you may remember as a child badgering your parents repeatedly that they must buy you that doll or the latest video game system or else you will throw, throw a tantrum or the very least hate them for the rest of your life. Fast forward to when you have landed that well-paying job in, for instance, the IT industry. You are pulling down big bucks and that used Chevy Cavalier you are driving just won't do. You really want to show your friends how successful you are. Oops. You go out and buy the latest BMW 300 series, perhaps the performance enhanced M edition. Of course, you have an apartment in the best section of town with a 85 inch super high definition TV and a monster home theater system. Sometime later, you meet that someone special and the apartment will just not do anymore. So you buy a McMansion, which is an oversized house for the lot that it sits on, equipped with all the best appliances, hardwood floors, etc. You buy your wife an Audi A7 just to run around in to go with that 300 series Beamer that you have. Life is good. You are admired as a wonderful human being. After all, look at what you and by association your wife have, a beautiful house, cars, etc. Then a little later, things change dramatically. You and your wife add another member to your family. Suddenly you go from two salaries supporting two people to one salary supporting three people. You'd better work longer hours to make ends meet. To make matters worse, Joe Kelly, who has a lower position in the firm, just bought a BMW 500M series for himself and an environmentally con conscientious Tesla Model S for his wife. You can't let Joe get the better of you, so you take out several loans, buy a Porsche Carrera 4S convertible and a Porsche KN SUV for the wife to go around shopping with Junior. Just when you think it, you have it all, including those loans, Joe buys a 6,000 square foot house in an exclusive area nearby. <clears throat> well, the wife is back to work, and thanks to a nanny, and you are able to make some headway on those car loans. So you really go into Hawk and you buy a 7,000 square foot house, which of course you can't afford, in an even more exclusive gated golf community. Time passes, and by the way, Junior, oh my, how he has grown, has just been accepted into Harvard Medical School, which you will have to pay a fortune for. More loans. After all, Joe's kid is only going to Stanford, so again, you are better than he is, right? You have truly achieved the American dream. Aren't you wonderful? 
Junior feels entitled to a cool set of wheels. After all, look what mom and dad drive. Perhaps a new VET convertible would be just the ticket. Joe's kid only drives a new Mustang convertible. Life is great, or so it would seem to the outside world. You and your wife are quite successful. You live in a beautiful home, in a country club, and you both drive expensive cars. What the neighbors don't see is that you and your wife are over your heads in debt while trying to keep up with the Joneses, or in this case, the Kellys. You and your wife are constantly arguing over money. You need something to relieve all this stress. How about one? No, make that two Johnny Walkers. Boy, that mellows me out. Soon two doesn't work, so make that three, four, etc. You see where this is headed? Your wife relieves her tension by shopping in Neiman Marcus, which only worsens the arguments over money. Your wife is tired over all the arguments and your drunken binges. Your dr drinking causes you to lose your job, your cars are being repossessed, and your home is in foreclosure. The last straw is that your wife has had enough and files for divorce. You have lost everything. Over half the marriages end in divorce. And over 90%, I want to repeat that, 90% of the divorces are caused by arguments over finances. Okay, reality check. So where does this leave us? According to personal finance guru Dave Ramsey, we work too much to buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't know. We spend more on shoes, jewelry, and watches than on higher education. Our savings rate has declined steadily from 11% in 1982 to 1.5% 1 in 2005. Our model of high spending and skimpy savings encourages greater consumption and therefore longer work hours. The pressures of work and consumption create stress leaving people with little time for each other. We try to restore social connections through private purchases, and so this cycle continues. 14 million Americans use illegal drugs. 12 million are heavy drinkers. 60, are, uh, 60 million are hooked on tobacco. <clears throat> 5 million can't stop gambling away their income and savings, and at least 10 million can't stop buying more and more. What's wrong with this picture? According to columnist uh, Ellen Goodman, normal is getting dressed in clothes that you buy for work, driving in traffic in a car that you're still paying for in order to get to the job that you need to pay for the clothes, car, and the house that you leave empty all day to live in it. In October 1999, the U.S. passed Japan as the modern industrial company with the longest working hours. This next one really blows my mind. In, two, in a 2008 poll conducted by Opinion Research Corporation, the U.S. is only one of five nations in the world with no legal guarantee of paid vacation time. What are the others? Uh, Syria, Nam. Guyana, Nepal, and Burma. Since World War II, the U.S. has seen a doubling of productivity. That's the good news. Yet our leisure time has not increased. In fact, working hours have risen, while consumption has doubled. Europeans, conversely, have traded their productivity gains for more leisure time instead of money. They might have the right idea. We'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, more good news. What about our children? Many kids recognize logos by the age of 18 months and ask for brand name products at the age of two. The average child gets about 70 toys per year. For the first time in human history, children are getting most of their information from entities whose goal is to sell them something 
rather than family, social groups, or religious groups. A 2013 UNICEF study entitled The Welfare of Children in Rich Countries ranked the U.S. 26th out of 29 nations surveyed using the criteria of child poverty, education levels, risky behaviors, health, housing, and the environment. Only Latvia, Lithuania, and Romania fared worse. Guess which countries are at the top? Europe. <laughs> they're all from Europe. Again, I think they, they're on to something. Between 1950 and 2011, the marriage rate fell by two-thirds in 2006. And for the first, uh, I'm sorry, by two-thirds. In 2006, for the first time ever, more American households were headed by unmarried adults than married ones. I brought this other fact back from a previous one because it bears repeating. Arguments over money are precipitating factors in 90% of divorce cases. Okay, some final thoughts. It is perfectly okay to pursue the American dream, provided we don't measure our self-worth and the self-worth of others by what we or they own. Even though we can afford it, the latest and best gizmos, we should resist the urge to buy it. It doesn't make us a better person. We must resist the urge to keep up with our peers who want to show how great they are by purchasing more and more better and better stuff. If and when we have children, we should teach them by our example to be conscientious consumers. We must realize that there are consequences of our overconsumption, not just on a local, but on a, but on a global scale. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thank you.